Very good morning to you and thanks for joining us on The Breakfast. My name is Nyam Gul Agaji. This morning on The Breakfast, we'll be looking at a very hot topic. Tinubu says merging ministries will lead to non-performance that is on justifying the reason he has so many ministers and so many ministries in his government. Also, we're going to have an off the press where we look at headlines that may be to the front pages of our national dailies. Uh, don't forget that we also have top trending issues, which are issues that caught our fancy in the course of the last 24 hours. Once again, good morning and welcome to the program. We'll go right away to the top trending issues of this morning. We we'll begin with Kunle Oluomo impeached as Ogun Assembly Speaker. 18 of the 26 members of the Ogun State Assembly on Tuesday voted for Oluomo's impeachment at plenary session. Oluomo was impeached for uh, alleged embezzlement of funds, high handedness, and related offenses. The Assembly immediately elected a member, Oludesi Elemide, as a new speaker. Giving his maiden speech after the impeachment, the new speaker asked for calm among members. He said that the impeachment was not targeted against the governor of the state, Dapo Abiodun, as being speculated in some quarters, explaining that the development is within the constitutional rights of the members to elect those who lead them in the House. The House later adjourned the plenary for two weeks with the new speaker in possession of the maze, the symbol of authority of the House. The Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, had on September 6, 2022, arraigned Oluomo before a federal high court sitting in Lagos over alleged 2.475 billion naira money laundering. Oluomo was arraigned on 11 counts of conspiracy, forgery, stealing and money laundering by the EFCC alongside Oladak Bo Samuel, Adeye Motaiwo and Adeonju Nimota Amoke, who is currently at large. The EFCC's prosecution counsel, Rotimi Oyedekbo, had told the court that the defendants committed their alleged offenses between 2019 and 2022. Oyedekbo told the court that they stole the sum of 2.475 billion naira from the treasury of the Ogun State House of Assembly. Oluomo was, however, granted bail while the trial continues. We are law-abiding legislators, and that is why you have not seen violence all this while. We have our rules and orders in the House, and it gives us, both the standing order and the Constitution gives us the right to select elect our speaker. The speaker is not in any way higher than members. He's just a first among equal. And whoever the member says is their speaker, is their speaker. And that- It has no correlation. You can see what we have achieved today. Both members of the ruling party and opposition came together to rescue the state. So the entire members of opposition fully participated in this change of leadership. I will take full responsibility of um, the whole thing as it unfolded. Maybe someday we'll know the definition of impeachment according to the Nigerian legislation uh, or legislators because impeachment is supposed to be an accusation of something and I don't know if it is legal to remove someone based on an accusation. If he's found guilty and is removed, then you can elect another, uh, another person to head that place, the legislature. But uh, maybe one day we'll have um, a lawyer that will explain to us why or how someone in Nigeria is impeached, that is accused, that's the word uh, impeached, and then someone is selected to replace him. The, the president of America at one point was impeached, Donald Trump. He was impeached, that means he was accused of a lot of wrongdoings, but he was still the president of America. So whoever is impeached is supposed to be taken to the appropriate quarters, maybe the court or somewhere, and when he's found guilty, he's then removed, and when he's removed, then someone replaces him. That's, that's just a layman's talking. Maybe uh, the law or the definition according to the Nigerian lexicon is different from the globally accepted uh, definition of impeachment. Okay, so someday we'll have clarification uh, to that effect. 
The next top trending is DSS arrest Mayor Tia, last president, for setting up vigilante group. Okay, this story says operatives of the Department of State Services have arrested the president of Meyetiala, Kautal Hore Belo Bodejo, over the creation of a vigilante group in Nasarawa State. Bodejo was arrested on Tuesday at the Meyetiala's head office, Tundun Maliya Cattle Market, kilometer 22 Abuja Kefi Expressway, Tundun Wada Karu, local government area of Nasarawa State. The DSS operatives, alongside some soldiers of the Nigerian Army, were said to have stormed the Meyeti Allah's head office close to Goshen Church at about 3.40 p.m. on Tuesday and drove off after arresting Bodejo at the gate. A DSS source who confirmed the arrest to our correspondent revealed that Bodejo was arrested over fears that the creation of the Nomads Vigilante Group could cause violence across the country. He added that the group was not registered with the DSS, the police, or any other security agency, hence it is not recognized by the federal government. Meanwhile, following the creation of the vigilante group, Bodejo had emphasized that the volunteer vigilantes would strictly adhere to the country's existing laws during their operations. During the inauguration in Lafia, Nassau State, Bodejo urged the volunteer vigilante to work in collaboration with police, army and other security agencies to ensure a more comprehensive approach to security across the 13 local councils in Nasarawa State. Uh, I do not subscribe to that as a person, but um, when it seems as if the government is not doing enough to protect the lives and property of people, people resort to self-help. So, uh, what is the difference between allowing people to register vigilantes and just making it legal to have a state police that will be answerable 100% to the center? I, I do not know why that is such an issue that cannot be addressed at this moment. but. Everyone is trying to make sure that they protect themselves. So you go to the east, they will form a vigilante group. They go to the west, you they form a vigilante group. You go up north, they form a vigilante group. And no matter what they say at the onset, that we're going to abide by the laws of the state, the laws of the, the country, it never gets to the point where they abide by these laws 100%. We've seen what is happening in the north, where uh, some recognized groups are also operating uh, with a parallel constitution, I might say, because the things that are captured in the constitution of Nigeria uh, are not adhered to strictly by uh, these uh, groups. Some of them are using the constitution of uh, um, religious bias to do what they are doing. Some are using some other beliefs that they have to do what they are doing. We remember what we used to have in the days of uh, Ojuzo Kalu in Abia State, where they had um, Bakasi boys and what they were doing. So if it has reached this point where people are trying to get vigilantes to uh, take care of what is happening to security situations in their localities, these vigilantes also are answerable to the governor or sometimes they are not answerable to the governor and they do what they please. I think it's high time to have state police but you know those who make decisions may have information that I do not have that made them or is making them think that state police is dangerous but vigilantes just need to register with the government and get recognized and then afterwards they do what they like. That's the fear of Nigerians that you either do something legal or you do not allow it to happen at all. Um, the third um, top trending is that our uh, third dollar has returned to Forbes list. Dangote is still Africa's richest man. So after six years hiatus, the Nigerian business magnate Femi Otedola has returned to the Forbes Africa list of the richest people, landing at number 20 with a fortune of $1 billion. Otedola's comeback marks a significant milestone. He last graced the Forbes Africa list in 2017 with his controlling stake in fuel distributor Fort Oil. However, a strategic shift saw him divest from oil and embrace the energy sector. In 2013, he used a Ford subsidiary uh, um, to acquire Geregu, a public power generation plant, and capitalized on his privatization. According to Forbes, Otedola's 73% stake in Garego is valued at over $850 million, forming the backbone of his fortune. Forbes revealed that Otedola owned about 90% of Garego when it was listed on the Nigerian Exchange uh, main board in 2022. But his stand 
Uh, he has uh, since sold shares to institutional investors, which include Afri-Exim Bank, Afri-Exim Bank Fund for Export Development in Africa and the State Grid Corporation of China. Forbes added that despite a Tesla's rise, the overall wealth of African billionaires dipped slightly compared to last year. This reflects the global economic slowdown, but it's important to note that African billionaires still fared better than their global counterparts, who saw a 4% decline. The magazine stated that the continent remains one of the world's toughest places to build and hold onto a billion dollar fortune as global investors remain leery of its stock exchange. Businesses struggle against trained economies, poor infrastructure and volatile exchange rates while changing political winds can make boost or bust private fortunes. Meanwhile, Ali Kodangote uh, remains Africa's richest man with his fortune rising to 13 Point nine billion from four hundred million dollars, claiming the top spot for the thirteenth year in a row. Despite political uncertainty following the February presidential election and the Naira devaluation in 2023, uh, that offset Dangote Cement's rising share price. Now the top uh, three sports are rounded out by South African luxury goods magnet Johan Rupert. Um, held on to the number two spot with $10.1 billion, down from $10.7 billion in 2023, as shares of his company uh, Richmond, maker of Cartier watches and Mont Blanc pens, slid while South Africa Nikki Oppenheimer, who formerly ran diamond mining from De Beers before selling it to mining firm Anglo American a decade ago, ranks at number three with $9.4 billion up. Uh, 1 billion from 2023. Interestingly, 13 of the 20 billionaires on the list saw their fortunes increase, while 7 saw their net worth decline. The biggest decline on this year's list belongs to Algerian industrial magnate Isad Rabrab, or Rebrab, uh, who was barred by a court in May from exercising any commercial or management duties at his conglomerate, Cervital Rebab, or Cervital. Rebab, who denied any wrongdoing, had previously served eight months in jail on corruption charges until his release in January 2020. Rebab, who shares the wealth with his wife and five children, including his son Malik, who took over as CEO in 2022, saw his net worth fall by almost half to $2.5 billion. The biggest gain belongs to Egypt's Nasev Sawiris, who added $1.4 billion to $8.7 billion thanks to a rise in Adidas shares. He owns about 6% of that anyway, as well as dividends from the German sneaker company and family conglomerate OCI. This year, South Africa claimed six ports on the ranking, followed by Egypt with five and Nigeria with four. Algeria, Tanzania and Zimbabwe each have one billionaire on the list, while Morocco has two. Now this is interesting news, you know, yeah, amid the economic meltdown in Africa, we still have people on the Forbes list. And interestingly, uh, none of the people mentioned here is a politician. So it means that the richest men in the world, the richest men in Africa, the richest, richest men in Nigeria are not politicians. So where is the money that we've been crying about that the politicians are taking going? Is it that they invest outside and then they cover their wealth so well that uh, people don't get to know? Uh, Abacha was never, uh, ever called the richest man in Nigeria. Still, we are repatriating a lot of wealth from elsewhere. Is that what is happening? Uh, so, but whoever has money, whoever has uh, that kind of wealth, if they invest in Nigeria, then Nigeria will not have anything to worry. We shouldn't be talking about just one billionaire, two billionaires, and our billionaires uh, being uh, ranked first or the 20th, as the case may be in the story that we've just read right now. Uh, but we should have more people uh, who are very comfortable. Not a lot of people want to be billionaires in dollars. They just want to be comfortable, make sure their children go to school, have what they will eat every day of their life, and then have a place to sleep, clothe themselves, just the basic needs. That's what most of the Nigerians, uh, Nigerian people want. We hope that one day we'll get to that. Uh, not all of us can get into Forbes magazine, but uh, or Forbes list, but uh, all of us should be able to um, be comfortable and say, okay, we've found a good life. Eureka, we're there at this moment. 
Well, uh, that's uh, it for Top Trending. We'll just take a short break. When we return, we'll be looking at the papers and asking ourselves what are the headlines and how do they impact us. Stay with us. <laughs> 